and welcome! For a time, the most convenient and cheapest way of buying a PlayStation 1 game was through the PlayStation Store for Vita, PS3, and the PSP. But when you buy a PS1 game this way, they are in Sony's proprietary PVP formats. Now, I've seen a few emulators support the PVP, like some cores do in RetroArch, but I know there are emulators out there that don't work with them, or maybe if you want to just play your digital games on an actual PlayStation. And that sucks. But today, I'm going to show you how to extract those PlayStation 1 disc images from the PVP files. But before that, a quick message from this video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by 16-Bit Store. At 16-Bit Store, we design and 3D print a variety of items for your video games and consoles. From our styluses to our display stands, we take pride in our designs for all products that we create and the finished quality of our prints. If you are interested or just want to help out the channel, why not visit the 16-Bit Store today? And if you use offer code 16BitReview on Etsy, you'll get 15% off your order when you buy two or more items. Now, as I remind you at the beginning of every backup video, please only use backups of your own games. Buying a PS1 Classic from the PlayStation Network and then going and downloading it from a piracy site since you technically own it is still piracy. If you want more information, please check out our videos, our Realms Lego or Extra Credits video, Do You Own Your Games, for more information about this matter. But before we begin, what will you need? Well, you'll need the eboot.pvp file for the PlayStation 1 games which you wish to extract. The easiest way to be getting one of these games is to download it and put it onto your PSP and then back it up to your Windows PC. However, if you don't have a PSP or a way to install games to the PSP anymore, there are ways you can back up these PVP files from a PS3 or a PlayStation Vita. I'll have links provided in the description for how to do that if you are needing to use those methods. The other thing that you'll need to download is the software PS Extract from its GitHub page and a Windows PC to run the software. Again, all links will be provided below. Now that we have everything set up, we can begin extracting our games. First, we need to open the folder up and start a command line there so we can access the PS Extract EXE tool. You can do this by just typing in the CMD on the top bar. In the terminal, you'll need to type in the command PS Extract.exe minus C. The attribute minus C tells the program to include the bin Q files when extracting. The bin is the CD's data file, while the Q is the track information file, which is absolutely necessary for any game with CD audio information on it, like Wipeout. Afterwards, you'll need to type in the exact location of the game which you wish to extract. You can easily do this by just copying the game into the folder which has the PS Extract EXE in it, but you can also do it by holding shift, pressing right click, and selecting the new copy as path option. Once you're done, just right click, paste the location into the command line, or just type in the location if you know where it is. Finally, press enter and watch your game get extracted. After a bit, the game will be converted into the binq file and you'll be ready to play the game in an emulator. Small note, if you're trying to go and get this loaded into RetroArch, do not rename the files, as RetroArch is designed to recognize the exact checksum and file names and renaming that kind of messes up RetroArch, so leave everything alone. Just put it in a folder and name the folder appropriately. So, now that you've backed up your game, what can be done with it? Well, the discs themselves are actually PS1 discs. 
you can just burn it onto the CD and have it run on an original PlayStation if you know how to get past the funky uh, hardware check. Although, if you don't want to go through the hassle of disc swapping or modding your PlayStation, these games obviously work perfectly well in a conventional PS1 emulator. But really, it's down to you what you want to do with it. Anyways, I want to thank you ever so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. And as always, I hope you have yourself a good day, and take care.